Yet another sad example of soft on crime insanity in liberal cities, of course, once again, out west. The lowlife who plowed his car into a group of 75 Los Angeles police recruits. He's now free as a bird, despite the fact that police called injuring 25 cadets a, quote, deliberate attack. The 22-year-old driver, Nicholas Gutierrez, arrested on charges of attempted murder of a police officer, but deputies let him go because investigators said they need more time to present their case to the district attorney who must file charges within 48 hours after an arrest or release the suspect. Uh, Jesse, I want to go to you first. What do you think? Well, I think CNN is saying that the SUV mowed down the cadets, yeah. not the man. Mm. I don't understand why he's out. You would know better than I would, Judge, but it, it, why wouldn't they charge him on a no bail counter, at least seek no bail? Because now he's out and these cadets are all losing limbs and now in critical condition. It sends the wrong message. And he wasn't drunk. So why was he purposely targeting his car against police? I mean, this sounds like a war on cops right here. And it doesn't surprise me this is happening in Los Angeles County. And tonight on Jesse Waters Primetime, we're going to have the sheriff from Los Angeles County on to explain oh. what the hell is happening here, because this isn't good. And I'm just waiting for Democrats to say something, because during the election, we heard about how much they loved law enforcement. Hmm. That's all you heard. And then the minute the election ends, someone tries to kill 25 law enforcement officials, and no one even makes a statement about this. This is a pretty big story. Judge, they're calling it a deliberate attack. Do you think they're having trouble getting into his mind to show it was intentional? I spoke to the DAs today, and uh, they could have charged him with a crime. That crime would have been a bailable offense. What they're doing is they're putting together the evidence to see how far they can go. These guys are very ethical. You're not finding people who are or DAs out there saying, yeah, we're going to get them. Look at what they did. No, they're listening to the law. They're analyzing the law. I love the sheriff. I think the sheriff's a great guy. The statutes are very clear. They've got to know what they're dealing with in terms of the driver before they can charge. So the charge and is what? It's is it unlike attempted? me for take the, to take this stance. You know it. Right. But, but is it attempted issue. murder? What is it? It depends on whether or not they can attribute that to his intent. What was his intent? What was his condition? We're not saying because we don't yet know. Got it. Well, Let it go. Can I ask a question, though? Because, it, you know, the reports were that he was charged with attempted murder of a peace officer and then released later that night at 9.49 p.m. Um, There's no charge right now. Right. So They dropped what, the charge. They didn't have... They didn't does have, that affect the case long term, that you drop the charges? Is no, it, no, okay. no. Because, look, what the police do is the police can make an arrest... The DA is the one who says yay or nay to the charge. So police can come in, you know, until the cows come home with an attempt to murder, and the DA can say, you don't have it, we don't have the evidence. You finish the investigation, we'll go for it. There's no charge now. So, so Jess, let me turn this to you then, and Judge, you may be able to jump in on this as well. It would seem to me, though, in looking at Los Angeles, that if you're a law enforcement agency, you feel like your burden is much higher than it was in the past. If you send something on to George Gascon and his office, if you don't have those T's crossed and I's dotted, don't expect a vigorous prosecution. Oh. I first want to say that I'm very glad you went to the judge before me, which I rarely say because she usually completely <laughs> disagrees with what I'm about to say, but it was good backup for this. But yeah. this was a central issue in the L.A. mayor's race, which just got called, and Rick Russo, who was running this yeah. time around as a Democrat, put crime front and center in his campaign, and Karen Bass ended up winning, um, but she had even shifted her message on crime to being much more serious about it after she had a break in herself. Yeah. So this is something that I believe um, Mayor-elect Bass will be taking incredibly seriously, and especially that it was going after law enforcement itself. I think things are going to change, even though I know that there's been a lot of disappointment more on the right than on the left, but even some Democrats about post-election messaging that there's been a lot of, oh, we're not going to do anything differently. I can tell you here in New York where I voted, People heard loud and clear what happened. We lost four congressional seats because of the law and order messaging. Lee Zeldin performed way above anywhere that we would expect because he put crime front and center. So I, I do think there will be changes. I'm glad that you used the word shift because that's what happened. It, yeah, they started talking about it, Democrats, very late in their campaigns because Jen Psaki, the former White House secretary, put out the all call on, hey, they're talking about crime and all the ads and it's killing us. You got to talk about... Yeah. I mean, you know, the pundits on their side of the, of the aisle were saying, 
look, the house is on fire. Somebody go get a hose. But so, yeah, they started talking about it, but they didn't talk about it in the way that was substantive in terms of how do you deal with not letting people go but on crimes that you know that you can, you know, six months ago would have been a felony and now they're a misdemeanor. But look at Josh Shapiro, right, who's the new governor of Pennsylvania, who right. talked about crime from day one. It was a centerpiece of his campaign. He went after D.A. Krasner, for instance. Gretchen Whitmer did the same thing. It, so it's not two. all Democrats. It's not. It's two got people who were able to win governorships. Josh Shapiro got over three million votes. It's historic. What Let's happened. leave this here for right now, but we're not going to leave the audience alone because all okay. you have to wait is 90 minutes for Jesse Waters' prime time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the sheriff. Story. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.